Hello, I'm Bill Seeley. I'm the founder of Reactive Metal Studio, and we have 30 years experience with titanium and niobium. Today, we're gonna to share the anodizing process with you. So let's get right to it. Here's what we need. To begin with, we need an anodizing power supply. So this is an SMT micro anodizer. We need a bath. This is a bath of water with a low sudsing detergent added to it. We need a cathode, a piece of stainless steel. We need a little screen to remind us to not touch things inside the bath. This is an electrolytic process. There are some dangers and some uh, uh, safety rules, and one of those is rubber gloves. Stir this up until it dissolves. Okay, our TSP is dissolved in the water. We need a cathode connection. So this is the negative output of the power supply. The anode, which is the positive side of the power supply. And a piece of a reactive metal. Today we have niobium. The process is the same. The colors are the same with niobium and titanium. So to simplify things, we're just going to do one today. As a reminder, this is not aluminum. This process has nothing to do with aluminum anodizing. So we'll start out by taking our piece of niobium, submerging it in the soapy water bath. I'll then turn the voltage up to about 15 volts. There we have it. And just like that, we have our first set of colors. We have a nice brown, Going to hook it back up, submerge it in the bath. Not quite as deep. And I'm going to turn it up to 22. Now we have a second color. We have a darker blue. And we'll do it one more time. Submerge it again part way. And I'll turn it up to about 30 volts. And now we have a light blue. So what's happening here? In the bath, when we run electricity through it, oxygen is being generated on the surface of the niobium. As a reactive metal, it absorbs it and grows niobium oxide. Niobium oxide is transparent. It has a higher refractive index than a diamond. So we are growing a transparent oxide film that is capable of generating interference colors. There is no pigments, there's no dyes. This is purely an effect of light. I'm going to submerge this all the way into the bath. I'm going to turn the voltage up as I take it out. And we will produce whole range of colors in 
one fell swoop. Now bath anodizing is one way of going about producing these colors on titanium or niobium. There is a second way, and the second way is to do it with an applicator. And an applicator might be an electrified paintbrush. Here we have a, uh, a wire soldered to the metal ferrule of a paintbrush. It becomes a portable bath. Even simpler, we can take the cathode clip, put a sponge in it, and paint with that. I'm going to slide the bath a little bit out of the way. I have here a piece of niobium that has been covered with tape. I have a little lead coming out of the side here that we're going to connect to. I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and cut a little section of this out. We're using a special tape here for anodizing. It is highly resistive to the passing of electrical current. It kind of looks like a roll of uh, packing tape, but I can assure you it is not. Okay. I've removed the tape from one area. I'm going to just go in here and burnish the edges a little bit. I'm going to take a little piece of uh, Scotch-Brite, just rip it off of here, and I'm going to scratch brush the air a little bit just to make it more visible in the light here. So there we have a nice bright surface. I'm going to hook up the lead to the anode. I'm going to take my sponge, get it damp, turn the anodizer down so I can start from scratch again, apply the solution, and I'm going to start, I'm going to start here with about 20 volts and just paint that in. I'm going to go up to we're at about 40 volts, paint it in again. I'm actually going to make a little color chart here. So I'm going to continue to push this up as I work the surface. And we're going to go all the way up here to 100 volts. Let's spend a moment on to make sure it got there. Get the soap film off so you can see it. Turn the anodizer back down. Take my knife and cut out a second little rectangle. I'm not being too fussy here. When we teach a workshop on this process, this is one of the first things everybody does. It's a color chart. It's a way to learn where the colors are and how they relate to each other. And I will burnish down the edge. Now just for fun, I'm going to take a piece of ordinary scotch tape and I'm going to cover that first area for just a minute. And this time, I'm going to scratch brush this in a different direction. We're actually going to turn this metal into a series of facets that will pick up light 
coming from different directions. And you can probably see that right now. If I take this and rotate it, the surfaces tend to turn off and on. Okay. So here we go. Anode connected. The cathode. Our trusty sponge. And I'm just going to turn this up to like 60 and run it up through those colors really quick. And then I'm going to go to 90 volts. And I'm going to paint it to 90 volts. Now we have both the 100 and a 90 volt color. Producing the 90 volt did not change the 100 volt. So that leads to the potential for putting images on the metal by masking, photo processing, using products like PNP Blue, uh, even things like fingernail polish to mask off an area, do it one color, remove the mask, and do it another color. Do many multiple colored pieces quickly and easily. So here we have another square opened. Oops, you need to always remember to burnish the edges. Gonna apply another little piece of temporary scotch tape. And my little piece of scotch bright. I'm gonna scratch brush this in a different direction. Developing light gathering surfaces in this process is very important. Highly polished surfaces don't really work as well as softer finishes. So now, I'm gonna wet my sponge again. I'm gonna moisten that area. And I'm gonna go to 80 volts. And paint in my third color. See it? See me do some shading around the edges? and then bring the whole thing up to its 80 volt color. And now we should have a surface that turns off and on as the piece rotates in the light. And we also have the beginning of a good color scale. Okay, we'll take a minute now and do some more creative kind of imaging on the material. I'm going to take and uh, cut out a bigger area here. And remove the tape. Burnish the edge quickly. Now for just for fun, I'm going to take this sponge, I'm going to dry it out a bit so it's just moist. It has a very nice pattern on the end, I kind of like. I'm going to set the power supply at 90 volts. And I'm going to print this sponge on the surface. After I hook it up. I've been doing this 30 years, and I still forget to hook it up. So here we go. Now I could be using literally anything to develop this pattern. A piece of paper, a piece of burlap, a piece of lace, 
And there I have printed the sponge on the surface of the metal. I'm now going to turn the power supply down to around 30 volts. Get a little more electrolyte and paint it on the surface. So I painted in the background with a lower voltage and it hasn't changed the higher voltage colors. That, in essence, is anodizing titanium and niobium.